So welcome people of God. So listen, I pray that this release, that that this even, this push is what you need in this fourth quarter so that you are reminded at the beginning of the year, if you are assigned here, if you know this is your house, this, if you allow me to speak into your life, at the beginning of this year, I said this year was supposed to be personal for us. And so I want to talk to you about the type of luxury performance that's supposed to be yours. That's your portion. But I need to I need to give you a push so that you can understand what's needed to get there. It's really not my mission to try to be the tough love champion of the prophetic. I'm really not going for that title. But listen, if that's what is needed for some of you to let go of these watered down flea market prayers that and, and expecting luxury performance, if this is what's needed, then my response to God has been, yes, Lord, use me, Lord. I don't have a prophecy for what's going on out here in the world. I, I can't tell you, but I have a word for you. If you give me the access and the agreement, I have a word that I want to release and speak into you. Let me tell you, people of God, where we sit right now, the work of the cross is finished. The work of the cross is finished. We have, we have the Holy Trinity. We have God, we have Jesus, and we have the Holy Spirit. We have the word of God. We have that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. We're in on Revelations 12 and 11, the last book that says we too overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. These watered down, weak, please God, all this begging that we're calling, praying, it's not cutting it. It's not cutting it. It's not biblical and it's not scriptural. All this agreement we got with, oh, it'll be a little bit of suffering. Pain is inevitable. No, what's inevitable is your place in the promised land. That's what's inevitable. People out here saying they ready, but then they double minded. And in real life, they weary. In real life, I got my eyes on a little bit of the new, but still a lot of the old. No, we don't have the capacity to intermingle the old and the new. We don't have that. We have, as the word says, we have to forget the past. We have to forget the old. It is gone and it's all about the new. The world says, oh, well, well, I can forgive, but I can't forget. We don't have that privilege. We forgive and we forget so that we can focus. I taught y'all that. I released that into your life. We don't have the luxury of looking at people and saying, hmm, are you still the same? No, because my decree says, my prayer says, so I'm not looking at the world to validate my faith. My faith is the certainty of what I don't see. And we, we don't understand. We still feel eluded by performance. No. Performance is not avoiding you. You double-minded. And the Bible says a double-minded man should not ask for nothing. Do you hear me? Up today, down tomorrow. In today, out tomorrow. No, the work of the cross is finished. That healing, it's yours. Pick it up. Deliverance, it's yours. Pick it up. The glory of God over your children, it's yours. Pick it up. The marriage, it's yours, pick it up. All your needs being met, it's yours, pick it up. This over-reliance we have, this, this needy posture that we have, even with God, it's not biblical and it's not scriptural. Let that go. Because listen, that's that's some flea market prayers and we trying to get us some luxury performance. It, it don't equate. It's not computing. It can't. At this point, it can't be nothing but luxury for us. It can't be nothing but big for us. At this point, with every single thing that that I've been through, that you've been through, it can't look like nothing but luxury. It was only inevitable that, listen, 
what you're saying is inevitable as far as, oh, t- I get tough breaks and oh, no. Pain is not inevitable. Suffering is not inevitable. Your performance is what is inevitable. Do you hear me? I'm trying to push you into your performance. Because some of y'all, listen, y'all not, y'all not keeping up with the house. So I'm, I'm coming in here and this is a little bit of a prophetic push. Do you hear me? Because we in the fourth quarter. We headed for the finish line. We about to cross over into something new. And we not looking at the end of this year like it looked last year. Are you clear on the vision? Have you made it plain? Does heaven know what you're expecting as far as performance? Pick up what already belongs to you in Jesus' name. Receive what is already yours in Jesus' name. Quit straddling the fence with, is this God's will? Is this not God's will? Because listen, when your mind is renewed, you know, you know the will of God. We are his sheep. We know his voice. Stop playing. All that, all that church religious stuff we've been taught. This is why we coming up empty handed. This is why people look at, you know, you so strong. You've been through a lot, but no performance. Girl, you, 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 now you a strong prayer warrior, but no performance. Girl, you can prophesy like, I don't know what, but no performance. We can validate everything except for no harvest. I could tell you the name of every water spirit that come up in your dreams, but I can't talk about no harvest though. I, I don't know, I, man, I don't know why you're man. Mm-mm. Don't ask me that. And we validate that. Right around the corner, breakthrough coming. It, I've been around, I don't, listen, I've been around the corner about five, six times. Which corner? Am I on the wrong street? Help me. I'm, according to your faith, be it done unto you. Do you hear me? Because the Lord wants you to know, stop straddling the fence. Stop being in and out with performance. Stop. It looked like it. Not quite. Stop looking at the world. Stop looking at your problems. Stop looking at the process. And in this fourth watch, be determined for performance. Be fixated on performance. Understand the heart of God for you, for your life. I'm trying to speak into your life. I'm trying to stir you to get excited about your life. We already know what the world wants us to be in agreement with. That's a given. We have. The reason why it's luxury performance is because we have the luxury of the finished work of the cross. Let me remind you again. We have the luxury. We have what Abraham didn't have. We have what Joseph didn't have. We have what the disciples did not have. We have. It is finished. It's finished. It's finished. Hold fast to your confession of faith and the word is made good. That's in the book of Hebrews. Hold fast. Oh, but it don't look like hold fast. Oh, but I've been waiting. Hold fast. Because, again, you are here expecting luxury performance, but you got this watered-down flea market type of prayer. No, it's it's not, it, it does not compute. So I'm just trying to push you into having what you say it is you've been praying for. That's all this is. That's all this is. Hear my heart. This is what I had to walk through. This is what I'm walking through. And I'm here and I'm speaking with all the love I have into your life for you to have what God says is yours. Life gets to go well for you, child of God. It doesn't always have to be struggle. It doesn't always have to be strained. It doesn't always have to be almost but not quite. Almost there. Almost there. It doesn't have to be that way. So I want you to get in agreement with the having. I want you to get in agreement with the harvest. I want you to get in agreement with what God says is yours. Is your let go of all that other stuff. 
Because here's the thing. What we're not going to do is to keep bombarding heaven with these flea market prayers and expecting luxury performance. That's what in this fourth watch in this house, that's not what we're not going to do. We are agreeing that we pray bold prayers. We are praying in the name of Jesus. We are praying with the greater one inside of us. And our decree is the harvest of luxury performance. So that somebody can look at your life and say, T tell me how that happened for you again. Because cause I know how your life used to look. Witness to me again about this Jesus. Witness to me again about with everything you've done, how you got blessed this way. Witness to me that way. Talk to me about that, that Jesus. Talk to me about that Holy Spirit. Put me on to that. that. That's what I want our life to be a witness to. 